All right, it's recording. Thank you again for reaching out to me. I can't tell you how shocked I was to to find out your letter was the real deal. Of course, Miss Carter. I hope the trek wasn't too arduous. It was an experience. Not a lot of my interviews start with a bag over my head. Just glad it didn't end up being a prank, I suppose. I apologize for that. Maintaining a low profile is... a requirement for us now. And why is that, Senator? Why did you leave your position so suddenly? Leaving was the only way I thought I'd be able to protect my family, Miss Carter. But I've since realized that I've left a lot of other people I care about in grave danger. I was hoping you could help me correct that. What are you talking about, Senator? There are sinister forces at work in the halls of government. I and my fellow members of the free states will no longer be shackled to the putrefying corpse of this nation. No, nor should anyone who values their lives. There is only one recourse left for the people of the United States. Strike out on your own. Take whatever you can carry. Get off the grid and get there fast. The end is coming, Miss Carter. And when it does, your government has no interest in keeping you safe. Chief Engineer's Log, October 21st, 2077. I am now confident that we can repair the reactor's cooling system if we can scrounge up some rubber tubing and coolant. Perhaps we can cannibalize the parts we need from other systems on the boat. Unfortunately, we have now lost our entire reserve of uranium fuel, and that will not be obtained so easily. We can use the ship's radiation sensors to pinpoint any nearby source of uranium, but reaching it will be another matter. This is enemy territory, after all, and any attempt to go ashore will be incredibly risky. I'll continue to look for alternatives, but I have serious doubts this boat will ever move again without uranium fuel. Even if we can find some, I don't know how we're going to retrieve it. I suppose that will be the captain's problem. Blackbird spotted. Badly injured. Way too many hostiles for the runner to engage. Request assistance from HQ. Mama, this is David. The Batman came back. I saw the shoe Mr. Lance and he fell off the roof. Michael said he'd be okay, but he isn't moving. David, come on. That's it. We had to grab our stuff. No! I have to leave a note for Mama so she can find us. Stop it! Boys, come on. We're leaving. Now! Hold it! I have to get Jangles! Michael, grab your brother! There's no time! They'll be back any second! What the hell is Josh doing? He's been gone for over an hour! We need to get out of here! The guys are thinking we're already at Concord. If Josh would hurry his ass up, maybe we can get there in time! Shit! Gunfire! Not good! Josh! Mark, do you know why toys are important? They help children dream. They let them imagine a better future beyond this blasted war. They give them hope. Thirty years ago, I met a man who understood that. Your father and I built Wilson Automatoys on that hope. He poured his life into that hope. And now you've thrown it all away, sold it in search of a quick profit. It's still not too late. If you won't do it for me, for your father, for the company, then please do it for the children. Damn it, Galton, what the hell is going on down there? I have to convene an emergency directorate meeting because of this screw-up. That synth was a prototype. It was absolutely not ready for field testing. The mess it caused in Diamond City threatens decades of work to keep us out of the spotlight. I will be very clear. My legacy as director will not be tarnished by your division's mistakes. I am going to find out exactly who approved any sort of operation above ground, and that person will be held fully accountable.
Entry 3, recorded by Research Assistant Peters on February 26, 2077. Time? It's 12.35 hours. Subject's direct radiation exposure level increased to 2 sieverts per 24 hours. Intravenous fluid intake increased to 1 liter. Subject reports localized pain in frontal and parietal lobe, accompanied by severe nausea, with vomiting on average, 3 to 6 instances per 12 hours. Solid food no longer viable by oral intake. Other symptoms include general weakness in limbs, bleeding of gums, severe abdominal cramps, and diarrhea. Dark stool indicates possibility of intestinal bleeding. Shortness of breath also an issue. I will now describe changes in mood or thought process. I have never in my life felt as horrible as I do right now. The discomfort is almost too much to bear. I often contemplate termination of this trial, but I know, I know it'll only be a few more days before I reach six sieverts. Then I can administer the serum. We'll get our contract renewed. Serum will go to the market and it's going to help people. It's really going to change the way we live. And me, I'll be <coughs> fine. I'll be fine. Cyclical thoughts. No other, no other developments to report. Hello, Let's get team. Brothers across Captain the river with Cambridge here. have been kind Welcome to the task force. To let us use the Cambridge Operation Police Winter's Department Zen as our base of now. operations. With you, together we will knock Eddie Winter off his throne and dump his sorry ass in a two thousand volt easy chair. It should come as a surprise to no one that our operations in Boston have been, in a word, compromised. Winter has eyes everywhere, even the BPD. The doctor said I could say goodbye. I've decided to have the operation. I know I'll lose all my memories. I don't want you to be sad. I... I have nightmares. And this world, the SRB, being hunted, I, I just can't handle it. Everyone says I'll be safer if I start a new life. I, I know I'll, I'll be happier. My only regret is I'll forget old man Stockton, high-rise, and you. Looking back, there's only fear, worse than fear, but I will miss my new friends. It's time, H2. I, uh, thanks. Fuck you, Baker. It's been over three years since I was in the gang, and I've been working my ass off same as you. And this Minuteman asshole just turns traitor, and Captain West gives him command of the unit? It's bullshit, and you know it. You can't tell me you trust this guy. I may have been a raider, but I never rolled on my people the way Clint did. He's keeping us separated so that when he puts a gun at the back of your head, I won't be there to help you. <sighs> Watch your back, Baker. Tessa out. Found the mayor in the tub last night. Locked the door before the missus found him. I didn't want her to see him like that. I told her... I told her he'll be back soon and not to worry. In the meantime, I told her to take the children down to the utility room in the gym and wait for the all clear. Situation's getting out of control and we're outnumbered. It's only a matter of time before this place falls into chaos. Storytime Simon here. Welcome back. And here it is, part two of The New Squirrel. One night, a red squirrel appeared at the bottom of Ricky's oak tree and woke Ricky and his family. Oh, please help me, said the red squirrel. I am lost and have nowhere to go. The elders were quick to turn the red squirrel away. But Ricky scurried down the trunk of his tree and stood firm next to the red squirrel. He yelled up at the elder squirrels. How could you turn him away? Just because he's from another tree? He needs our help. Affected by Ricky's assuredness and determination, the elders agreed to take in the red squirrel. The red squirrel thanked Ricky for standing up for him. You won't regret this, he said. End of holotape. Please insert holotape three.
This is Vault Tech interview number 03 for the position of overseer for Vault 114. Interview subject, Benjamin Beasley. Mr. Beasley, as overseer of Vault 114, how would you settle a disagreement between two of your vault residents? Well, I would obviously take it through the proper channels, assuming neither of their requests were against the law, of course. This is, of course, assuming that the conflict had already gone through all the other members of the Vault's Residence Council that I plan on organizing. Vault Residence Council, you say? Yes, of course. People need government. They yearn for it. I think it's a civic duty of every red-blooded American patriot to serve the... Yes, I think we have everything we need here. Thank you for your time. Oh, already? Well, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Yes, I'm sure you will. Please make sure to fill out your non-disclosure agreement on your way out. Maybe you figured out something a long time ago, and I'm just learning it now. Just wasn't fair, Coral. If not for this kid... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure thing, kiddo. I'm hungry, too. And there's nothing for us here. Let's go. Tim. Good job on keeping things under wraps. We've taken your advice and have asked the other project managers to meet you at Station 4. Stall them if they arrive before we get there. They haven't been told anything. We are very close to accomplishing our goal. Please be patient. You will be rewarded in time. Detective Valentine. Nick. Listen, I'm sorry. You've got every right to be upset. But you need to believe me when I tell you I had no idea. Operation Winter's End was my baby. I believed in it. I still believe in it. They kept us all in the dark, me included. I got briefed this afternoon, and they laid it all out. The whole thing. Winter's deal with the DA, his agreement to bring down the other families, his idea to record the holotapes and incriminate all known associates, and them needing a legitimate op and a real task force to make it all look like Winter was the focus. It was the plan all along, Nick. There's nothing we can do. Winter was a stoolie for the feds. He reported directly to the BAD TFL all on the books. For his cooperation, Winter will be granted total immunity. It's over. Effective immediately, Operation Winter's End is to cease all investigations and operations. The task force is hereby disbanded. We played our part, pal. Not the part we thought, but hey, it happens. Now we're just another box in the file room. Nick, listen to me. Everything that's happened with Winter, with Jenny, it's more than any one man should have to handle. You need help. Boston PD has been working with the eggheads at CIT. Some new program they have to deal with trauma. Scanning brainwaves or some such. I'll get you the info. You're going. That's an order. Command, this is 429er. We have visual on hostels near Fallons. Copy? Over. 429er copy. How long before range? Command, we are two mics from range. Over. 429er copy. You are clear to engage when ready. Command copy. We'll update as soon as we... Ambush! Taking heavy fire! 429, you are to retreat back to HQ immediately. Do you copy? Over. Command, say again. Over. 429, to retreat back to HQ immediately. That's an order. Over. Command copy. Pulling back to HQ. Out. Where are you, honey? I've been told to take the children to a safe place near the gym. Are you okay? The children are scared. This whole situation is my fault. I convinced you we needed all of this stuff if the worst ever happened. Now look at what's happening. All my fault. When you come back... Oh, hold on. Looks like the little one's hungry. Shh. It's okay, baby girl. Don't cry. It's okay. Mommy's here. Listen. When you come back, let's get out of here. Let them have this place. We don't need it. I love you, honey. See you soon. Message to Buster Conley. Nice piece you did on the monorail construction project. Heaven's Highway? Devil's Doing? Huh. <laughs> Cute. But I think you give organized crime too much credit. The various Boston families coming together to fund a public works project? Huh. <laughs> Please. 
Clearly you never sat down to dinner with these guys. They can barely agree on an appetizer. And ain't nobody jumping to pick up the check. The bosses had their hands in the honeypot, sure. But nowhere near the level you were suggesting. You did get one thing right, though. Safety Inspector Alice Lansky was killed. They'll never find her. Cause there's nothing left. After he bashed her brains in with one of those giant wrenches, Vinnie the Cracker's Venucci dissolved her body in a barrel of hydrochloric acid. So write your follow-up. Then feel free to tell the cops the murder weapon is hanging on the wall in Venucci's garage. On 4 Charter Street. Eddie Winter, signing off. Confidence on Subject 12 is high. We'll know for certain post-mortem. And any progress on question three? None. The EKG shows nothing unexpected. The answers are too damn predictable. You've made your opinions quite clear on the value of question three. Removing it could invalidate all the data we've accumulated to date. Moving on. Question four. The data on this is fascinating. Why does baseball have the highest degree of correlation? Even more than question eight. Our methodology was exhaustive. Subject 12's answers in regards to baseball and his childhood were particularly fascinating. See here and here. I wonder, do they play baseball in the Institute? Or is there some sort of defect in their programming? We need another failure to explore this further. We can do nothing more with Subject 12 except final processing. I'll let the reclamation team know. Blake, I want you to listen to me as a brother here. This whole deal with Eddie is wicked shysty. I mean, what kind of business partner threatens to kill you if the deal doesn't go his way? We are in way over our heads, man. I can't see a way out of this. No way except shutting down and getting out of Dodge. Give me a chance to talk this out with you face to face. I just want both of us to get out of this. Brotherhood of Steel Recon Team 429 Alpha. Final report. Our mission has failed. Six hours after insertion, my company was ambushed. We lost five nights and exhausted our power armor reserves. We scuttled the armor to prevent looting, and then retreated under fire, abandoning our supplies. I was separated from the two remaining members of my team within a week. Both are missing. Status? Unknown. I'd hope to rendezvous with them at our holdout bunker and seek a means of escape from the Commonwealth. But no one has come. No one has come. Message to Robert Cooper. Bobby, we discussed this. You hooking up with your stepsister is your own friggin' business. But you talk in your sleep. Look, maybe you babble about baseball or sing show tunes. Or... Could be you chat about those three bodies Colin O'Malley dumped in the sand trap of Arlington Greens. You want to take that chance? I know I don't. Sorry, Robert. The girl's gotta go. Eddie Winter, signing off. As a head of the town council, I call this meeting to order. In attendance this evening, we have Perry Owens, Gerald Spencer, Sylvia Cooper, and myself, Bert Strickland, as acting council head. Bert, what is all this about? I've got wheat that needs bringing in. Yesterday, I received a very disturbing visitor. I managed to record part of the conversation. It's probably best if you all hear it. I don't see anything about that in my records. What was it you said you wanted again? Don't toy with me. We know a girl here found some pre-war data related to energy research, and you're going to give it to us. I really have no idea what data you think we have. We're just farmers and fishers. I'd be happy to ask around for you. Please, just lower the gun. Look, I'm a reasonable man, but the Institute wants that data. You got two days to get it for me, and then we do this the hard way. Oh, God. Jacqueline. What has your daughter done, Gerald? She's been saying that she was close to finding something in those old terminals she fixes up. 
but I don't think she actually found anything. Bullshit. Now, I overheard her talking to that trader last week. Something about getting ten times the price for something if she sold it in Diamond City. As a head of the town council, I call this meeting to order. In attendance this evening, we have Perry Owens, Gerald Spencer, Sylvia Cooper, and myself, Bert Strickland, as acting council head. Uh, Pete, sit down. We all need to remain calm about this. I need you all to keep this to yourselves for now. The last thing we need is to start a panic. All right. All right. Has has board board head board on the okay. front line, it's and keeping my mind on work is helping me deal with the problem. Um, this is Technician Rand, Arc Jet Propulsion Division. I'm here with Technician Janowski, work log A1190. Janowski and I have been working on the Mars Shot Project for about three months now, and I think we have the thrust calculations worked out. Man, I wish I was headed up there with those guys. It'd be nice to get the hell away from our lousy planet. Hey, easy. If we don't record these logs properly, we're going to get fired. The supervisor is already itching to get rid of us, especially since it's taking us longer than we promised. So what? We've been drafted anyway. We're shipping out in a few weeks, remember? <sighs> Soon we'll be doing push-ups, eating freeze-dried rations, and just wishing we were spending our day inside a cushy private laboratory. Of course I remember. Uh, this is Dr. Elliot with the official report for the Directorate from Bioscience. The date is, um, August, 2178. I'm pleased to report that, as has been the case during my tenure, crop yields exceed expectations. In point of fact, everything down here is fine, with one notable exception. Dr. Frederick has informed me that the Directorate has pre-approved research on samples of the FEV virus, which he already has in his possession. Now, I'm not one to question the Directorate, you all know that. I don't even want to know where this came from. But, well, this is troubling. Dangerous, possibly. I will do my best to make sure risks are minimized. But I really do hope that the consequences are understood. Kendra and Delancey are six feet under. The Silver Shroud claim the hits. Nor they. Sinjin wants you to keep up the recruiting efforts. We need more warm bodies after we deal with the costume. And don't worry. Kate's gathering a bunch of meatheads to take the shroud out. Gather some men and do what you do best, Kate. Sinjin says you can do anything you want to the shroud. Anything. If Northy makes a run for it, you can play with him too. The boss ain't happy. Now's not a time for failure. He's getting personally involved. He's gonna pay the Shroud's flunky friend a special visit in Good Neighbor. After he's done with that, he'll check in. He'll expect results. Hi, sweetheart. I'm sorry it had to end this way. I tried to build a place where our children could live comfortably. Y you know, I'm a family man. And know our children come first. I'd do anything for them. Even at the expense of taxpayers' money. The mob has broken through, and it's only a matter of time before they reach the lower level. As a last resort to protect our family, I give you... Well, I... I give you myself. Take my body to the people. Tell them I died a coward. Maybe they will leave you in peace. I left the key to the safe with one of the attendants. I, I forget his name. Anyway, goodbye, my darling. I love you and the children so much. Listen, Dale. I don't know what's taking you so long, but you were supposed to meet me here three days ago. I'm out of supplies, and I'm gonna have to make a run. I can see why that Solomon guy is willing to pay so much for these ferns, cause... <laughs> let me tell ya, getting walkways set up here has been a real pain in my ass. Wait for me to get back before you take the first load to Diamond City. I've got a couple of things I want. Hey, Sheila! That you up there? The walkways look great, but 
How do I get up there? There you are. Took your sweet time, Dale. Head over a block, there's... Oh, shit! Barrels! Dale, look out! Run! Run! Sylvia, I don't care what Bert says. People have a right to know what kind of danger they're in. Look, the youngsters may think the Institute is just a ghost story, but I know you're old enough to remember the attacks. I know you feel for the girl, but she brought the trouble down on us. She and her father need to answer for it. If we give the Institute what they want, or just give them the girl even, maybe they'll leave us alone. Seriously, this is getting freaking ridiculous. Merging the common and public garden was a jagged enough pill to swallow. But I went along with it. What, I'm gonna fight the developers? But how much smaller can they really make the swan pond? We get boats crashing into each other every day. It's like a glorified puddle. But what do I know, right? I'm just the groundskeeper of the world's smallest grounds. Might as well stay home from now on. My garden's bigger than this. And at least I get to eat the peppers and cucumbers. Not watch Taurus cry in disappointment. Message to Alexander Strelnikov. My esteemed Mr. Strelnikov, I know someone of your profession values discretion above all else. But I have to honestly say, screw that. I mean, come on. One bullet... Halfway across town, and you blew Ron Trevio's head clean off. You, sir, are an artist. Are all the assassins from Russia as good as you? I seriously doubt it. But listen, your secret's safe with me. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Sal Bosconi. You and I clearly need to talk. About Danvers, about the Montrano mess, about everything. I think we'd both agree that our attempts to improve North-South relations have been a complete failure. Look, I take full responsibility for the behavior of my guys. I expect you to do the same for that moron Montrano. But what happened in Danvers? I hardly know what to say. Your people turned that theater into a slaughterhouse. Those people are dead on your orders, not mine. And for no conceivable reason I can see. So let's meet. Just the two of us. Talk it all out. You name the time and place. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Rodrigo Palama. Okay, my friend. I thought about it. And I've reached a decision on the Fallon's job. Your cut is exactly what you deserve. Zero dollars. Zilch. You heard me right. You get nothing. Yes, you cracked the safe. And yes, we got the diamonds. But you also tripped the alarm. Mackie got pinched, and that's entirely your fault. Now, when he gets out, Mackie's gonna want your head on a platter. I'm gonna give him your share instead. I see you're getting off easy. Eddie Winter, signing off. I think he's actually lost his mind. I can't believe he really expects me to do this. I've always been on board with the Gen 3 program. It makes sense, but this? Nothing good can come from this. How am I supposed to explain to my staff that Sean wants a child synth for no immediately apparent valid line of research? And to base the physical features off records of his own childhood? It defies all logic. No, I can't do this. I won't. You know, before getting shipped to the Commonwealth, I thought Elder Lions still had some good points. The Brotherhood in the Capital Wasteland, they were about helping. But this assignment, it's opened my eyes. On the flight here, we passed city after city. Buildings taller than I've ever seen. Some that nearly clipped the Pridwin. And who uses them now? Mutants. Freaks. Seeing all that destruction, tens of millions dead, Brought on by technology run amok, it made it so clear. Elder Maxon is right. The wasteland needs to be cleansed. And we're the ones to do it.
Greetings, brothers. You are here because it is that time of year when we induct our newest members into this most esteemed fraternity. Before their initiation is complete, they must be prepared to receive the mysteries of our order. You can find the substances necessary to open their minds in the drainage, <laughs> as you all remember from your own initiation. Remember that the pledges should be blindfolded before you bring them up the canal, and keep an eye out for anyone out late in the park. The elders will be by Sunday evening for the dinner, and all new pledges must be present, so stick <laughs> to the normal dosage. Orto Oblitus Osa! Update. Observed unusual activity has ceased. Window is open for a heavy to make contact, but they should act now. The package is still in my possession. It cannot remain here safely for much longer. Out. <sighs> a nest full of deathclaw eggs. A dozen. Maybe more. Smashed to bits. Except... This one. No wonder they wouldn't... Tell us what was in that case. If I'd known, I would have personally told the gunner bosses and that glorified liquor cabinet Wellingham to take those Diamond City caps and stuff them. I guess we know why that death claw tracked us all the way from Lynn Woods now. <laughs> we stole their damn kids. Christ. Maybe. Maybe if we just. Return the eggs. Oh, hey, mama. You looking for this? Personal log. United States Army Staff Sergeant Michael Daly. This past Saturday, October 23rd, while en route to West Stockbridge, a vertebrate crashed into the roof of this museum. The cause? EMP following nuclear detonation. Several, in fact. From the intel I've gathered, this was a global event. The co-pilot was killed on impact. Pilot died of his injuries a day later. The day after that, Flaherty and Kanawa were shot by some scared, desperate survivors. Then Przansky took off running. Haven't seen him since. Now, it's my turn to go AWOL, if that concept even applies anymore. My armor's fusion core is burned out, so I guess my soldiering days are done. I'm heading to Boston, on foot, to see if my sister survived all this. She's got an apartment on Boylston Street. This is Mike Daly, signing out. Good luck. And God bless America. Or what's left of it. Good morning, teachers and students. It is a fabulous Wednesday here at Suffolk County Charter School. The Glee Club is having their seasonal bake sale today. So stop by and show your support so we can send our team to the regionals. Remember, actual baked goods are forbidden on school grounds. So they will be selling colorful cups for your food paste. Oh, also, we will be having a school assembly during second period tomorrow on the dangers of strangers by Jangles, the moon monkey himself. Once again, we would like to thank our benefactors from the NAPP program for allowing us to have such a big star come and speak to you kids. We owe our benefactors strict adherence to the rules they have set forth. This is Principal Hudson signing off. Have a great day. Damn it, Scribe. I told you I didn't want the corners bent. The issues were to be in mint condition. I'm sorry, Proctor, but this is the only limited edition annual we've recovered. Even before the bombs fell, this was the rarest issue. The one where Grognak dies and comes back to life? Yes, Scribe. I've read the 2076 Underlane Price Guide from cover to cover, so I'm well aware of its past value. The fault for this travesty rests squarely on your shoulders, because you chose to ignore the important lesson I taught you. Which is? Always bag and board. I'm sorry, sir. You're absolutely right. And I promise it will never... Um, sir? What's that red blinking light on your terminal? What? Oh, damn it all! I left it in record mode. Just let me...
What in the hell's wrong with you? You don't get to vanish like this. I don't care how many booby traps you hide behind, Coral. We're still here. He's your kid, not mine. So you'd better get your shit together and come find us when you're done with this idiocy. Adrian. Carl. Got a job you might be interested in. You know about Jamaica Plain, right? Place where they hid all that treasure before the war. No one's ever found it, account of all the ghouls. Sal's putting together a raid team. We still need a sniper. Even split of the loot. You up for it? If so, you know where to find me. Wake up, Commonwealth. Since they're not your enemy, they are victims in this war as well. True, they were created by the Institute, but they were created as slaves. Thinking, feeling, and dreaming beings, utterly oppressed by their tyrannical masters. So join with us in fighting the real enemy, the Institute. Join the railroad. When you're ready for that next step, don't worry. We'll find you. Okay, hun. Just say it right into the little box here. This is a recording of the Ladies' Watch Axel... Axel Larry... Uh... Of Boston. Say your name, precious. Jenny! Oh, right. This is Jenny speaking. Okay, sweetheart. And what are we doing tonight? Spying on Uncle Jake. <laughs> no, honey. The other thing. Oh, right. We're catching bad guys. Aunt Becca? Is Uncle Jake a bad guy? Only when he's had too much juice, Princess. Now grab your coat. We're heading out. Happy Friday, all. The NAPP program launched this week with success. But not without problems. I hate to have to throw away your mother's carefully packed lunches, but I am afraid we must put our foot down on this issue. I am assured all of you will get used to the flavor of the pace. Also, I have been informed that flavor varieties will be on their way pending continued success of the program. How exciting! To those complaining, I will repeat. There are absolutely no psychological or physical side effects from participation in the NAPP. Any observed effect is assuredly psychosomatic and possibly related to a lack of trust in the government. Remember, our participation in the NAPP not only helps our school, but in the long run benefits our nation. Thank you for your attention. This is Principal Hudson signing off. October 22nd, 2077. I finally told them tonight, and it was bad. Real bad. Dad was shouting, telling me I should be ashamed, that, that I had to get out of the house. Mom just cried, and somehow that hurt worse than anything else. She didn't say a word. Not even when I pack my things. I can't go to John. He doesn't even know yet. Maybe he'll never know. If it weren't for the cabin, I, I wouldn't have a place to sleep. Just need some time to think. Last time I was here, I was just a little girl playing clubhouse in this old cabin. Now I'm really scared. Will anything ever be right again? Randolph Safe House reporting. Package one is away. No problems. Route cleared as promised. Runner Reports recipient is, as of now, closed for business. Switchboard spooked her. We're working a new route. If our friendly neighborhood heavy can take out hostiles at the following location, that would make our life a lot easier. Mr. Tim's out. Good morning, teachers and students. It is another great week here at Suffolk County Charter School. I hope everyone is getting their costumes together for the annual Halloween festival. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that no outside food is to be brought on campus as of this week. This goes for faculty as well as students. We have received generous donations for our implementation of the Nutrition Alternative Paste Program. We owe our benefactors strict adherence to the rules they have set forth. Thank you for your attention. This is Principal Hudson, signing off. Jeffries, Lee got the recorder working. So this is the sort of detail you had in mind when you signed up for the Gunners? 
Hauling luggage from Lynn Woods for some robot butler? Uh, what was his name? Uh, Wellington? <laughs> Wellingham? Not now, Private. Where's Connors? He's not at his post. Oh, uh, sorry, sir. The lieutenant said he found some tracks. Wanted to check them out. Private Martin. Tracks? What track? What the hell is that? Oh my... C Connors! Where, where's the rest of him? Jesus. They found us. Sergeant Lee, grab the case. Do not let that thing out of your sight. Everyone inside the museum, now! Major! Major, what found us? Randolph here. Package 2 is away. Runner took some fire along the way back. Touch and go, but our doc says he's gonna make it. We could really use some supplies over here. Any chance the Big D can let us come back in? Barring that, we need some more hostiles removed. Mr. Timms, out. Good morning, teachers and students. It is another great week here at Suffolk County Charter School. I hope everyone is getting their costumes together for the annual Halloween festival. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that no outside food is to be brought on campus as of this week. This goes for faculty as well as students. We have received generous donations for our implementation of the Nutrition Alternative Taste Program. We owe our benefactors strict adherence to the rules they have set forth. Thank you for your attention. This is Principal Hudson, signing off. Randolph here. We're still working the route. Runner has confirmed the final destination. He's solid, but we got another bump we need our heavy to take out. You up for it, Chief? Mr. Timms, out. Entry 3, recorded by Research Assistant Peters on February 26, 2077. Time? It's 12.35 hours. Subject's direct radiation exposure level increased to 2 sieverts per 24 hours. Intravenous fluid intake increased to 1 liter. Subject reports localized pain in frontal and parietal lobe, accompanied by severe nausea, with vomiting on average, 3 to 6 instances per 12 hours. Solid food no longer viable by oral intake. Other symptoms include general weakness in limbs, bleeding of gums, severe abdominal cramps, and diarrhea. Dark stool indicates possibility of intestinal bleeding. Shortness of breath also an issue. I will now describe changes in mood or thought process. I have never in my life felt as horrible as I do right now. The discomfort is almost too much to bear. I often contemplate termination of this trial, but I know, I know it'll only be a few more days before I reach six sieverts. Then I can administer the serum. We'll get our contract renewed. The serum will go to the market and it's going to help people. It's really going to change the way we live. And me, I'll be <coughs> fine. I'll be fine. Cyclical thoughts. No other, no other developments to report. Blackbird spotted. Badly injured. Way too many hostiles for the runner to engage. Request assistance from HQ. Message to Robert Cooper. Bobby, we discussed this. You hooking up with your stepsister is your own friggin' business. But you talk in your sleep. Look. Maybe you babble about baseball, or sing show tunes. Or, could be you chat about those three bodies Colin O'Malley dumped in the sand trap of Arlington Greens. You want to take that chance? I know I don't. Sorry, Robert. The girls gotta go. Eddie Winter, signing off. Personal record. Dr. Brian Virgil. This will likely be my last recording. My requests to shut down the FEV program have repeatedly been denied. We've learned nothing useful in the last ten years. Why does Father insist on continuing it? If he won't see reason, then I have to take matters into my own hands. What we're doing... It's not right. It needs to stop. If anyone should find this after... After I'm gone... Know that I never wanted to hurt anyone. Anyone! Do you understand me? I'm gonna make sure the whole program is shut down. 
If not for good, then at least for years to come. After that, I know what I'm about to do will be seen as a betrayal. Treason, he'll probably call it. So, I'm leaving. I have a plan. And if it works, I'll be somewhere safe. Somewhere not even the Coursers can find me. Everything that we've done. The lives we've taken. If there is a god, may he have mercy on us all. I am getting so anxious about our meeting, Detective. You know, I think I have only ever wanted someone to know me. And really, I can't think of anyone who knows me as well as you do. I am your object of fascination, and you have become mine. It's humbling, Detective. Message to Buster Conley. Nice piece you did on the monorail construction project. Heaven's Highway? Devil's Doing? Huh, <laughs> cute. But I think you give organized crime too much credit. The various Boston families coming together to fund a public works project? Huh, <laughs> please. Clearly you never sat down to dinner with these guys. They can barely agree on an appetizer. And ain't nobody jumping to pick up the check. The bosses had their hands in the honeypot, sure. But nowhere near the level you were suggesting. You did get one thing right, though. Safety Inspector Alice Lansky was killed. They'll never find her. Cause there's nothing left. After he bashed her brains in with one of those giant wrenches, Vinnie the Crackers Venucci dissolved her body in a barrel of hydrochloric acid. So write your follow-up. Then feel free to tell the cops the murder weapon is hanging on the wall in Venucci's garage. On 4 Charter Street. Eddie Winter, signing off. Okay. First, I just... I want to say I'm sorry, Dad. I knew I was onto something big, and thought I'd see what a traitor would pay if I found it. I had no idea that the Institute would be after any of this. And now the whole town is in trouble. I know you told me not to worry. But I just know that the town is going to vote to throw us out, or worse. I wasn't lying when I said I didn't have the data, despite what Mr. Owens and his cronies think. That's why I have to go back in. I know the key is in there. I just need to put the pieces together. It's something with that professor. If I can find it, maybe I can give the Institute what they want. And they'll just leave us alone. Found the mayor in the tub last night. Locked the door before the missus found him. Didn't want her to see him like that. I told her... I told her he'll be back soon and not to worry. In the meantime, I told her to take the children down to the utility room in the gym and wait for the all clear. Situation's getting out of control and we're outnumbered. It's only a matter of time before this place falls into chaos. Nikki, you old bucket of bolts, it's Marty. I know it's been a while, but I came across a little mystery I thought might get your circuits firing. You remember that ugly grasshopper statue on top of Faneuil Hall? Turns out it's got a note in it. A note written by the son of one, Shem Drown. I don't expect that name means anything to you, but the guy was a coppersmith. Way back when folks did shit like that. Apparently, this note leads straight to the old guy's stash. I don't know what's in it, but I'd sure like to know if it's still there. I'm gonna go do a little recon on the hall. If you decide you want to get the team back together, you let me know. Human, did you make the machine work? Yeah, yeah, it's recording now. Good. Fist, this is Hammer. I got a human to make the machine work. We found a good place. Already has walls and water. Some human made a tiny room underground with many good things inside. Send more people so we can raid more. We give you these guns for trade. Okay, human. Make the machine stop recording now. Human! Not time for sleep! Stop bleeding and work the machine! Ah, fine. Hammer will fix it! 
This is day eight of trial six. The last week has been very productive but exhausting. I think we'll need a break after this. Vinay has done some really marvelous work with the personality mesh. It's, well, it's, it's almost too good. The responses map almost identically to expectations, some of the most lifelike I've seen. Of course, it's not really Sean. None of his memories are in there. That, even now, would be a step too far. It's starting to have an effect on the team, I think. I know I've been caught up in the moment once or twice. Just a second or two, forgetting that he's not a real boy. Still, I think we'll need to consider restricting him to the lab only for the moment. I'm well aware that others are, are put off by his presence. <laughs> if I were slightly more arrogant, I might consider that a sign of success. If you are hearing this, then whatever conflicts you and I have endured are over. I have no reason to believe that you'll honor the request I'm about to make. But I feel compelled to try anyway. This synth, this boy, he deserves more. He has been reprogrammed to believe he is your son. It is my hope that you will take him with you. I would only ask that you give him a chance. A chance to be part of whatever future awaits the Commonwealth. Hi, sweetheart. I'm sorry it had to end this way. I tried to build a place where our children could live comfortably. Y you know, I'm a family man, and know our children come first. I'd do anything for them, even at the expense of taxpayers' money. The mob has broken through. And it's only a matter of time before they reach the lower level. As a last resort to protect our family, I give you... Well, I... I give you myself. Take my body to the people. Tell them I died a coward. Maybe they will leave you in peace. I left the key to the safe with one of the attendants. I, I forget his name. Anyway, goodbye, my darling. I love you and the children so much. Damn it, Galton. What the hell is going on down there? I have to convene an emergency directorate meeting because of this screw-up. That synth was a prototype. It was absolutely not ready for field testing. The mess it caused in Diamond City threatens decades of work to keep us out of the spotlight. I will be very clear. My legacy as director will not be tarnished by your division's mistakes. I am going to find out exactly who approved any sort of operation above ground, and that person will be held fully accountable. Lost them? Yeah, we made it, Molly. We made it. <sighs> Why'd they let us go? No, no. Come on. Let's keep moving. Wait. The Common. You've heard about the Common. Oh, God. Mar, look out! As the minutes tick by, and I stare at the walls of this godforsaken place, I'm still trying to cope with the reality that I am a living lie. My identity as Paladin Dance is nothing but a memory now. Everything I held dear, everything I've ever believed in, is completely gone. I've spent far too long wondering why this happened to me. But the truth is, it doesn't matter. I'm a synth which means I am a freak of nature, a perversion of science and an example of where mankind has gone wrong. For the benefit of humanity, I need to die. Not because I'm cowardly or despondent, but because it's the human thing to do. This is Dance, former paladin of the Brotherhood of Steel. Signing off.
October 22nd, 2077. I finally told them tonight, and it was bad. Real bad. Dad was shouting, telling me I should be ashamed, that, that I had to get out of the house. Mom just cried, and somehow that hurt worse than anything else. She didn't say a word. Not even when I pack my things. I can't go to John. He doesn't even know yet. Maybe he'll never know. If it weren't for the cabin, I, I wouldn't have a place to sleep. Just need some time to think. Last time I was here, I was just a little girl playing clubhouse in this old cabin. Now I'm really scared. Will anything ever be right again? All right, it's recording. Thank you again for reaching out to me. I, I was more than a bit surprised to receive your letter, Senator. Of course, Miss Carter. I hope you didn't find the journey too arduous. It was an experience. <laughs> I'm frankly... Just glad it didn't turn out to be a prank. I apologize for that. Maintaining a low profile is a requirement for my family and I now. It is the reason, Miss Carter. There are sinister forces at work in the halls of government. In my time as senator, I became aware of plans made by those in power. Plans of an unconscionable nature. When they found out what I knew, oh, they threatened my life and the life of those I love. I simply could not be a part of that anymore. Of the United States, Miss Carter. We've asked you here to carry a message to the nation on our behalf. I and my fellow members of the free states will no longer be shackled to the putrefying corpse of this nation. And any man or woman who values their lives must join us. Men and women of conviction must strike out on their own and build for themselves secure underground refuges using whatever tools they can. Because when the end comes, and it will come, any day now, Miss Carter, there is no one we can trust but ourselves. And why is that? Is it related to why you left your position as senator so suddenly? Of the government? Happy Friday, all. The NAPP program launched this week with success, but not without problems. I hate to have to throw away your mother's carefully packed lunches, but I am afraid we must put our foot down on this issue. I am assured all of you will get used to the flavor of the paste. Also, I have been informed that flavor varieties will be on their way pending continued success of the program. How exciting! To those complaining, I will repeat. There are absolutely no psychological or physical side effects from participation in the NAPP. Any observed effect is assuredly psychosomatic and possibly related to a lack of trust in the government. Remember, our participation in the NAPP not only helps our school, but in the long run benefits our nation. Thank you for your attention. This is Principal Hudson signing off. Storytime Simon here with the exciting conclusion to The New Squirrel. Tomorrow we can get to know each other and become best friends, said Ricky to the Red Squirrel. The Red Squirrel made a sound that Ricky took for agreement, and the two squirrels curled up to sleep. Later that night, Ricky woke up to the sound of leaves rustling in the oak tree. He looked around. The Red Squirrel was gone. Ricky surveyed the landscape below and saw a pack of glowing eyes approaching the base of his tree. Cats! Ricky heard a voice from a nearby tree. It was the red squirrel. I'm sorry, he said. They were following me and I couldn't bring them to my tree. They would have eaten my family. As the cats ascended the tree and began to devour Ricky's friends and family, Ricky reflected on his decisions. His last words were, I really wish I would have trusted my elders. The End Boston Towers, Sky Lanes 1981. Acknowledge, over. Damn it, what's going on? Oh, God! Mayday, Mayday, Mayday! Boston Towers, Sky Lanes 1891. Lost engines, we're, we're breaking up. There, aim for the road! Pull up, pull up! <laughs>